get two people in the waiting room. Okay. Okay, I think we're good to go. All set, okay. Uh, well, it's uh, May 23rd, 2024, and I'll open up the uh, meeting this evening for the uh, Deerfield, Town of Deerfield Conservation Commission. And so we'll call that order, the uh, meeting for order now. I will tell you all right now, I just got done with a little bit of COVID a while ago. I'm still congested. I have sinuses like with the allergies from like crazy. So if you can't understand me, uh, just pipe in and I'll see what I can do for my congestion. And I can only hear out of one ear. So see how tonight goes, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, other than that, we'll uh, open the meeting again. So certain meetings uh, are being held uh, that normally would be held to municipal office are being held remotely. Uh, with adequate alternative means of public access and would require public participation in accordance with House Bill Number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which has been on the governor's March 12, 2020, order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, MGL Chapter 38, Section 20, until March 31 of 2025. So we're conducting this meeting for, for that requirement uh, remote on Zoom. Um, the meeting guidelines um, this evening is please speak one at a time, follow the Deerfield Code of Conduct to be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and non-repetitive. Uh, just two additional guidelines for the meeting tonight. Uh, please make requests to myself, to the chair, if you wish to speak. Um, and if you're not presenting, um, but have comments, please keep your comments to uh, the two or three minute uh, I'm that would be greatly appreciated so we can work through. We do have a long agenda tonight, a uh, number of different uh, items to open up and some old business as well. Uh, before I start though, we'll take a roll call of the uh, members to make sure we have everybody we have a quorum here tonight. Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Libby here. Mm -hmm. All right, Ben Byrne. Uh, mute. Uh, ben Byrne here. Yeah, okay. Uh, and Mary Cloutier. And Mary Cloutier here. All right. Uh, Kate Devlin, I know is absent, uh, but Pete Law is also here. So we do have four of the five members that are able to proceed with the uh, with the meeting this evening. Uh, the first item on the agenda tonight is uh, looking at the minutes from 425, uh, our last meeting. And Pete. I just am going to make a note that we're going to postpone the review of those meeting minutes to the next regularly scheduled meeting. Okay, great. Because uh, I haven't seen them yet. They're not <laughs> ready yet. Okay. All right. So we'll push that off uh, until our next meeting. So we don't have uh, anything to move on there. So we can uh, jump right into the uh, new business. Uh, the first item of new business is a request for uh, certificate of compliance. And let me get all my paperwork out here. Um, for 108 North Hillside Road, um, this is uh, a uh, property transfer that's underway, uh, but there was an open order uh, for certificate of compliance that, as far as I can tell, dates back to 1990. Uh, maybe. 97, but someplace so uh, well before any of us were on the board here. I did uh, meet with a homeowner this morning and walked the site. And um, from what I know, the order of conditions back in 1990 um, were set out. A lot of them were the general order of conditions, uh, but they're also listed as prevention of pollution. Um, and there's also a special condition listed for the sand filter repair dated 926 1990 uh, by Dave Spencer of Mail and on file with the uh, Geophil Conservation Commission. So, as much as I can tell uh, from the documents that I have found so far, um, 
that this has to do with some of the septic system um, upgrades that were done apparently in 1990. I did review some documents from 1996 and 1997 this morning, um, but I'm not sure the uh, applicant is on site, but I believe your attorney, and maybe that's uh, Leah Phillips. Yes, I represent if, Kirsten. Yeah, if you could give us a quick update on <laughs> uh, on your insight, uh, <laughs> I don't, Leah, that'd be great. <laughs> I don't really have anything to add to the conversation other than what you said. Uh, she purchased the property in 2020, and this wasn't raised at the time of purchase, um, or the owner before that. I guess this is from two owners ago. Yeah. And the new buyer, uh, their attorney is needing it to be released. So I was asked to attend in case there were questions, but I don't really have any more information than you have about it. <laughs> All right. Well, we're on, a, we're on the same platform then. Uh, and these, as we know, these uh, old orders of uh, uh, COCs do linger out there at times, and we do tend to have it brought to our attention during uh, real estate transfers. <laughs> Uh, uh, when we go through this. So I did look at the site today. Um, there was a pretty extensive amount of work they did back in the 90s uh, to move the septic system up on the top of the hill. There's a wetland on the north side. There's a wetland on the uh, southern side. But they brought it up into the uh, upland forested area and then brought it down via well, the pumping system to get it up there and then brought it down to the leach field that's uh, behind the house. Um, so I didn't see anything that jumped out at me. Um, I'm assuming that uh, the work was completed per the order conditions. Um, although in the application, which is the uh, form uh, 8A, request for certificate of compliance, the request of number five, which is in your uh, in the meeting packet for tonight, is that the work regulated by the uh, above reference reference or conditions has been satisfactorily completed. I honestly don't know. Uh, there's another option uh, on the third bullet that the above Russian reference or conditions has lapsed and is therefore no longer valid and the work regulated was never started. And it looked like it was started, but I really don't know. Um, so I'm kind of in a quandary, uh, commissioners. I think that we're, we're I would recommend uh, signing off on the uh, request for certificate. Um, but I'm just kind of a little bit of a quandary of which one we check off on Form 8A is whether it was either completed satisfactorily or it was no longer valid, valid and it was never started, which there's obviously a septic system in a leach field there. I saw it this morning. Um, but what are your thoughts on? on how we want to feel, or is there any other questions uh, um, or input on, on the, what we're looking at here? Can you repeat the three options again? Yeah, the first option is that the work regulated by the above reference order of conditions has been satisfactorily completed. So and was that what you witnessed today, though? I get, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but it seems like that's what you're saying. I believe so, because in the order of conditions, they uh, only checked off prevention of pollution, which is not a part of our order conditions now. And that the sand filter repair was conducted in 1990. That was a special condition. I can't tell you, you know, I didn't right, do right. The inspection. I can't tell you whether that was actually done or not. So okay. that's one of the areas, and Mary, there that is it satisfactorily completed? I don't know. Um, and the other option would be that the order conditions has lapsed. Uh, and this one we used in the past and several times and is therefore no longer valid and that the work regulated by it was never started. Now that last part of the sentence bothers me because it appears that some work was started on the septic system uh, 35 years ago, um, but I can't prove it either. So. Um, is that one sentence all by itself? One sentence all by itself. And um, the other option, the following following portions of the work that have been referenced has been satisfactorily completed. We could use that one and say as far as um, visual inspection, it seems to have been uh, completed 
satisfactorily um, and just listed as that, that we have no other knowledge. But per my um, site visit, you know, the following, so this would be the second box on uh, 8A. So the following portion of the work regulated by the above reference, reference order conditions have been satisfactorily completed. Use additional paper if necessary. And we can, I, we can just put in there some um, wording to say um, that uh, the, there's obviously a, a working septic system in place um, for the conditions because the conditions were so vague, you know, 35 years ago, I, I, I don't know. And there was additional engineering uh, uh, designs I looked at today from 1996 and 1997, where they did an upgrade of it. And actually they, well, probably in my estimation, I'm not a, uh, a septic engineer by any means, but they really went over the top and um, tried to do this in a, uh, in a way that really separated everything else from the wetland. So I don't think we have uh, any jurisdiction other than we have to uh, go ahead and uh, acknowledge the request for a certificate of compliance. So a lot of gray areas, but my recommendation would be uh, we accept the request. I just don't know which box to, uh, to, to mark off and how we uh, narrate it for uh, DEP's review. Can we I say would... that there is evidence that um, some part of the work has been started? Done. Yeah. 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 Um, a definite no evidence. evidence of it not working. Right. Uh, no, not that you saw at all. Nope. I think that's enough in yeah. this case. And I mean, the spirit of it is to keep it away from the wetlands. And if that's what you witness, then. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now would be the time to. Uh, you know, fix a problem if it was a problem at this point. So without a visual issue occurring, which should be obvious, really, then uh, you, we will assume a working septic system. Right. I think, be, box I one. think uh, uh, the attorney would uh, they also say that there would have to be a, a, um, a review of the working septic system be, as part of the sale of the, um, the property. So yeah, we have a passing be. Title five. Yeah, so we have the Title Five there. And, you know, that's so far out of our jurisdiction. Yeah. As far as the wetlands is, so. All right. I would be comfortable with satisfactorily completed. Okay. I don't know how the others feel. And Mary? I agree with that. Yep. Okay, Ben? Yes, sir. All right. Um, so then we just take a quick motion then that we would accept the uh, uh, request for uh, certificate compliance uh, uh, via form uh, WPA form 8A, uh, section five, first box that the uh, regulated work was um, satisfactorily com completed um, following my site visit on 523-24. Yeah, who wants to take a stab at that one? That's a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying not to talk much tonight, Ben. You can just say so moved. So moved. Okay. That's a good one. I like that. All right. Okay. Thank you, baby. So moved. Do I have a second? And burn, I'll second. Okay. And then we'll take a quick uh, roll call vote. Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Uh, ben Byrne. Burn, aye. Uh, and Mary. And Mary Cloutier, I. Yeah, Pete Law, I. So uh, we can go ahead with that, Amy, just leaving the uh, form AA as is, uh, where it's checked off, and you could uh, send that off to the appropriate site. How's that? Okay, I will uh, get that out as quickly as possible. Um, so I guess, Leah, you can have it recorded. Um, I'll see if I can get that done tomorrow and uh, send it. Um, 
I guess Pete, you'd have to sign electronically. Uh yeah, just uh I'll be away tomorrow afternoon, but um yeah. Just let me know. Um our closing date's not till June 4th. Okay. Oh, oh okay. Okay. We got to have a little more time, but yeah, I just, I, I will get it out to be signed just cause you know, it always takes a little longer and you guys will want to get it recorded. I imagine at the registry of deeds before the closing. Yes. Thank you all so much. Enjoy yeah. the rest of your evening. Yeah. Thanks. We appreciate it. Lee. It's not till the fourth. Usually it's like, I have a nine o'clock tomorrow morning closing. <laughs> no, Amy was great. She said I had to get it in all by Friday <laughs> to yeah. get it on this meeting and I did. <laughs> Good. Thank you much. Thank you. Bye. All right, take care. <coughs> okay, then uh, we'll go ahead and open up the hearing for the RDA for 357 Greenfield Road, Lot 1. Um, just consider the notice of intent filed by Northern um, Enterprises to see if work depicted on the plans at 357 Greenfield Road. Uh, identified in the assessor's record as map 95 lot 31 is subject to the wetland protection act and uh, we'll open up that, that hearing everybody has i believe the updated material uh, in the meeting packet um, i did get some updated plans i think yesterday the day before um, that was prepared by robert obert i don't think i talked to robert yesterday because of their site does that look Sure, Robert is going to be on tonight, but is there another representative for the applicant uh, on the call this evening? Hi, yes, I'm, I am Tracy Miner. I'm representing uh, Northern Enterprises for Robert O'Bear. Okay, hi, Tracy. Um, so you're with Northern Enterprises. Thank you. I, correct, I am. I'm not as versed as Robert, so I will do my best. Okay, <laughs> appreciate it. Um, let me just go through a little bit of the background then, uh, Tracy, and then you can fill us in. Um, so updated map details from by yesterday. This is a building lot on, uh, Greenfield Road. Um, as you see from the maps, um, submitted, this was a wetland delineation done by, um, uh, Ward, I think it was named, uh, wet, uh, Wendell Wetlands. Um, so you see the edge of the wetlands in the back of the property. And you see a couple other lines in here of a 50 foot wetland uh, buffer and a hundred foot wetland buffer. And so there's wetlands definitely in the back. Um, and in the, uh, the, the meeting documents, um, Mr. Smith went through a lot of detail about the uh, vegetation, the soils and, and so forth. So that is there. Now, in the proposed um, building uh, design that was sent in, it is a proposed house location that's fairly close to Route 5 and 10, which is outside of the 100-foot wetland buffer. And there's a septic system that would be inside the 100-foot uh, wetland buffer, but greater, uh, but outside the 50 foot wetland buffer which is needed for a septic system so that's one of the kind of the quirks in here we usually look at the 100 foot buffer um this is in the the, the proposed septic is only for the 50 foot buffer um there's also a line in here for uh proposed control uh erosion control barrier that's part of the project um so I wanted to put out that, that the building was outside, septic was in the hundred. Um, just a couple of quick questions for Tracy. Tracy, do you want to do any more presentation? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I really don't have anything to add. I think, you know, as far as Robert has submitted the plans, um, the site plan, everything sort of speaks for the questions you had of us in the application. Okay. I did have a couple of quick questions. Um, did the septic pass a a, a, you know, a a perk test recently? I see documents in. I'm trying to pull it up um, from 2007. But was there another 
protests recently there? It's outside of our not, jurisdiction, but I'm curious. Yeah, not recently. Okay. Um, so that would be under the uh, health department looking at that. Correct. And is this, um, is there going to be any well uh, put on that location or is it town water supplied? I think it's town water coming up that main. Town water. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, okay, I have just uh, uh, some additional comments. I did review this with um, PEP earlier today and we looked at it. Uh, but any other comments or questions from the commissioners, please? Yeah, Sean, go ahead. Um, so are septics allowed to be within the 100 foot buffer and not require an NOI or does any work within the 100 foot buffer require an NOI? I mean, is there a special caveat for septic systems? Is that why the 50 foot line was delineated? Is that what you were talking about earlier? Yeah, and that's what I asked uh, Mark Simpson today and that was, I've never seen a 50 foot buffer before, but it's within that uh, closed septic system area. So they can so, do that work. But it is within the hundred foot buffer, so we would probably look at saying yes. This is the work. The limit of work is not in the house, but the work would be done within the hundred foot buffer. Um, so then we would look at, you know, the the edge of the wetlands being the limit of work, if you will, and putting uh, on the erosion controls and and so forth. So I think that's. I know what your question is, Shama. Go ahead if I can answer it. No, I mean, it sounds like it's allowed, exempt is exempt, as Mark would put it, and, you know, whatever. Do we is do we even get to put in the caveats for filter, you know, um, silt vents and hay bales on that 50 foot and then be done with yeah. it? Or? I All think right. we, we would look at probably a... Uh, as the septic's within the 100 foot zone, so yes, it is within the boundaries of the Wetland Protection Act. Um, but we might do a negative three because there's no big work going on in the uh, area, but with the conditions of, and we can discuss that the conditions of, you know, where do we put the edge of the limit of work? Do we put the limit of work that they can go down to the edge of the wetland? Do we put the limit of work where they can do it at the 50 foot wetland buffer as a consideration of how far we want to work in that parcel. Uh, I want the erosion control to follow the, you know, the town of Deerfield conditions. So if the erosion control is pretty, you know, uh, pretty tight in that area, but we, we will send all that out, uh, Tracy, with this too. We have a, a lot of conditions of just how erosion control should be in place. And I think one of the other conditions we may want to consider since we know there's a wetland there and it does, the topography drops off in the back. So the elevation goes down to the wetlands. Uh, and we may look at within that area to see at the edge of the wetlands to the, the 50 foot wetland buffer, uh, maybe the requirement of shrubbery, uh, you know, different vegetation to, uh, we, we wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to see like a lawn just cut all the way to the edge of the wetland. We may want to put in some, uh, consider uh, putting in some different type of vegetation that'll slow down anything that might come off the top of the, of the area. But I did look at it from the road. I wasn't able to meet with uh, uh, Ms. Bear yesterday, uh, but it's pretty flat out to the wetland and down. So I think we can put in some barriers there. So John, kind of <laughs> to your, can, uh, Questions, yeah, there can be conditions in there. And I think some of them is, uh, you know, determining the kind of limit of work where anything can be done. Uh, the Did you control. see, Pete, can I just interrupt? Sure. Did you see today's updated um, plan from Obear? It I did. shows I, I the think proposed. It's the packet, right? I don't think so, no. It oh. came separately by email. And it, oh, it shows uh, the proposed erosion control barrier um, outside of the 50 foot wetland buffer. And then the proposed septic area, you know, beyond that. So it appears that 
50 feet is the proposed edge of work um, or just even a little beyond that. So like there isn't going, they're not going to go beyond, you know, beyond the 50, between 50 and zero to the edge of the wetland based okay. on the, the, what I'm looking at. Okay. Yeah. Which helps. I mean, that's what you were asking for. <laughs> I think yeah, that's pretty well displayed, and um, all we would do is the caveats of the so order, of, you know, the limit of work conditions. would be. So the limit of work probably would be at that fifty foot. Yeah, that's buffer. what they indicate. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Okay, so, excuse me. <laughs> so, any additional uh, comments from the commission? All right, then I could probably take a uh, Somebody wants to draft a motion to potentially look at this as a uh, form two uh, determination uh, with a negative determination three with um, conditions that the uh, limit of work would be the edge of the um, fifth foot wetland buffer, that the uh, erosion control barriers would be per the town of Deerfield conditions, which we can provide to the uh, to the builder. And we would like to see, or we would require a, um, a limitation of one anywhere past the 50 foot uh, wetland buffer and, for, and um, the addition of um, shrubbery uh, in that area to help uh, in long-term erosion control. So a long kind of statement, but I think it's those three bullets. If anybody has any other comments um, or, or not, or we can uh, see if we can get a, a motion on the table to um, address. I so move. I have it down. <laughs> you have it down? Yep, so so moved by Ann Mary. So, so move to my comments. Yep. Okay. I'll second it, Sean Libby. Okay. So the motion on the table to accept the uh, motion, on, uh, motion on the table. I will take a roll call vote to uh, move ahead to those three conditions of the uh, limit of work, the erosion control barriers for the town of Deerfield conditions, and um, the addition of shrubbery, et cetera. At the at the uh, fifty foot wetland buffer, so we can take a quick vote to accept. Uh, Sean Libby, Sean Libby, aye. Uh, Ann Mary, Ann Mary, include your aye. Uh, ben Byrne, Ben Byrne, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. So oral passed with conditions, so we can close out that hearing. And uh, hey, Tracy, you can let. Uh, you and Robert know that uh, we'll get the uh, paperwork put together and all the paperwork will have the um, details for all the conditions of the erosion control, et cetera, uh, once it gets uh, put together by Amy. Perfect. Thank you all for your time. We really appreciate it. All right. Good luck with it. Thank you. All right. Uh, the next. Uh, the next item tonight for consideration is, is the open the hearing for the RDA of intersection of Pete and Greenfield Road. Um, let's see, it's a request to uh, file by the Berkshire Gas Company, see if the work is submitted uh, plans for the intersection of Greenfield Road, Pete and subject to Wetlands Act. And we have uh, all that information in our meeting packet. 
And do we have a representative from uh, Director Grassley's gas Lewis tonight? Yes, Eric Phillips. Hi, Eric. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. I've looked at this a, a few times, but why don't you go ahead um, and give us your background and if you can pull up any of the documents, if you want to screen share, we can do that as well. Sure. So I'm a project manager at Berkshire Gas. So you're going to have to excuse me on a lot of the technical aspects of this. I'm just not well versed in that. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a technical representative with us tonight. It's just me. Um, so I can kind of speak to some of the aspects outside of the plan, but I won't be able to go into too much detail on those. Um, but I will start off by saying I believe that the plan that you guys have may be out of date. Uh, right. Hang on. One second, let me try to share my screen here. Okay. Okay, so currently, I believe what you guys have is us essentially excavating the entire um, length of this, this project for the replacement. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's changed in the last couple of days. What we're actually going to be doing now is um, here where you see detail A in this bubble, um, we're going to open that area up there and we're going to directional drill the entire length of this and okay. replace that way. None of the erosion control uh, measures are going to change. Everything is going to remain the same. The only thing that's going to change is the disruption of that asphalt and that pavement there. It's going to be okay. less uh, substantially. So. Um, yeah, I know the horizontal drilling which makes sense there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's all changed. Just like I said, within the last day or two. So, um, and outside of that, you know, uh, typical erosion control measures. We'll be using straw waddles. Yeah, I looked at um, all of your um, your specs for the erosion control, and it definitely meets um, our town requirements on. How they're placed and, and staking and so forth so i don't see any issues there yeah and if um, there are you know once we get the project kicked off if there are any issues um i believe you guys have my contact info feel free to reach out and i can get that remedied you know the, by the following day for sure yeah yeah okay yeah one of the you know, general comments um to let you know we'll put it probably within the conditions but all the erosion control will have to be in place before we start a project work uh, yep. for your plan. And then uh, to give us a notice at least 72 hours beforehand um, so that if we do want to come out and take a look before we start, uh, we have that notification. Okay, so um, all the road controls on the west side of uh, five and 10 coming up through. So that's you know, drilling that limit there. How long will the uh, project take? Um, right now, I believe it's going to take about two and a half weeks. I know, right. We were scheduled to start this on the third. We haven't received our state permit back. Uh, that's okay. been with the state for four weeks. I tried to reach out to them today, um, but I didn't, I, I wasn't successful contacting anyone. Um, so right now this, this may push a little bit to the right, but I can't imagine that we're going to go much past mid June as a start date. Okay. But I would still anticipate this being about two and a half weeks to complete. Okay. All Hopefully right. shorter. But. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Do you have any... I said all your designs so and meet our criteria. Um, any other comments or questions from the commissioners, please? Uh, I don't believe so. Not from my end. Okay. Uh, for the commissioners? Negative. No. Okay. Well, I think on this, um, again, we'd be looking at a, a, a negative three um, with just a couple of conditions that all the road control uh, per plan would be in place uh, project to any uh, project work. And that uh, I noticed for the Conservation Commission, at least 72 hours in advance, the project commenced to be completed, uh, which will allow uh, the commission 
to do a site visit uh, for a remote control if deemed necessary by the commission at that point. Other than that, I think it's uh, probably a negative three with a couple of conditions. Any um, other thoughts? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, isn't it exempt because it's a gas line? Um, I'm not sure because it's not a, uh, a municipal project per se. Oh, okay. Um, it's so, being done by a commercial venture, but um, I did have that question, and but I'm, I'm just not sure. But I think we can go ahead with the uh, negative determination with the uh, condition because it's, the applicant okay. did not bring up in the request to do a uh, exemption from what okay. I okay. Okay. Um, is that correct, Eric? That you didn't go ahead with requesting the exemption on the form. Um, yeah, that's it, yeah. it's it, we're we're still working through that as a company. Um, yeah, we've kind of reached out to our internal uh, legal group to to have them really comb through what the requirement is and what yeah. our process has been. Um, we could be exempt. You know, it's it's the way it's worded. It's a little tricky. So just in you know in good faith, we try to provide these anyway, just to go through and make sure that everybody's on the same page because the last thing that we want to do is you know upset any commissions and any municipalities that we're doing any work in and just make sure that we're all on the same page and you know trying to get to the to the end goal here and and not be no. disruptive to any wetlands or or anything like that so no no i appreciate it and i, I just think because you're not a direct municipality type of thing the exemption yeah, we have to if your attorneys can work all that out let us know that'd be great but uh, yep. We appreciate doing this process here. So, uh, any other questions from the commissioners? I don't see any. So, would somebody like to make a motion to then uh, proceed to closing out this hearing? I so move. <laughs> you came up with it. Uh, I'll second. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, this motion has. So move down the table. You go ahead with a negative three um, determination on uh, the TA forms two. The following conditions that all the road control be in place uh, prior to any project work uh, per the plan. Uh, so that meets all our criteria. And then uh, breaks the gas provide the compound at least 72 hours uh, notice prior to project commencement uh, um, so that we can. Uh, Take a site visit or if we need to uh, beforehand. But otherwise, um, we can go as so moved and we'll take a quick roll call vote. Um, as noted, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Uh, ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Uh, and Mary Collier. And Mary Collier, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. So that motion passed as is. And uh, we'll close out that hearing and uh, should be. Good to go with that, uh, Eric. And uh, I think all the specs meet everything. So we're good. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Take care now. You too. All right. <laughs> okay. So the next item on the agenda tonight is old business. It's the uh, uh, reopening of the hearing for the RDA for Little Meadow Road. This we discussed briefly last month. There were some concerns because uh, such a such a sensitive area, um, and I know uh, Sean and I did a site visit several weeks ago. I don't have the date in front of me uh, to take a look at it, uh, but this is a uh, RDA. Uh, filed by Kevin Scarborough, uh, see if the work depicted is at Little Meadow Road and subject to the Wetland Protection Act and, and so forth. So I believe the engineer working on this project is uh, DPC. I don't know if, uh, is that you, Jeremy? Yeah. DP? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, your camera just came on there, so I thought so. Um, and so we want to just kind of look at it again. This is a, 
I believe still a 850 uh, linear foot sewer pipeline switch. Um, the applicant is looking for a uh, uh, determination of one two on a negative five uh, determination, um, which provides a um, exemption. Uh, we just talked about it earlier for the uh, WPA and also submitted uh, uh, exemption for the priority habitat exemption in that area. Um, so that's what uh, we have in front of us. Um, it is a sensitive area. And you probably want to talk a little bit about, um, Jeremy, just kind of protections we'll use there. And if we have to do anything more stringent uh, in that area while you're doing this work, and if you could just update us too on the uh, timing of this, that'd be great. Absolutely. And um, I'll, I'll caveat that by saying we had, um, I know it was a, a short notice, but it sent to, to Amy, I think it may have been sent to you, um, was a revised plan for the scope of work to take place out on Little Meadow Road. Um, uh, several of the manholes in that area that were planned to be replaced were actually buried underneath the road. Um, okay. And the town had gone out and uncovered some of those manholes um, to expose the rims so that we could actually see inside them and get a better understanding of the condition of some of these manholes. Um, and based on our inspections of those manholes and connecting pipes, um, we have reduced the amount of like uh, deep excavation to take place to replace, to replace the manholes and sections of pipe. Um, instead, there'll be a less intrusive a means of repair done to some of these existing manholes and some of the existing pipes. So the linear footage of pipe to be replaced is reduced from 800 feet down to around 300 feet. Uh, oh, okay. So it would just be one section of pipe. And I'll, I'll share my screen now showing that that area. We appreciate that update because Sean and I were out there looking for a manhole. It's like, I don't see anything on there. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing what Kevin's got in his mind because we we were doing the same thing. He's like, oh yeah, it's right here, right here, and right here. And yeah, you know, sure enough, they started digging, and it was right on the money. So, yeah. um, I know there was only one manhole out there that was that was uh, above grade, um, and so I'll kind of run you through um, run you through this here. So uh, the manholes that were plan to be replaced and I'll, I'll just annotate here in red is um, this manhole here, a manhole here, a manhole here, and a manhole here. These four manholes were planned to be replaced. And then the pipe segments that were planned to be replaced were from an existing manhole to here and basically connecting the dots between these, these manholes. These were all scheduled to be manholes demolished, entirely replaced right in place and same with their, their connecting sewer main, um, as I said. We uncovered, um, I think, three of these manholes. These two manholes were buried, and this manhole was buried. And uh, we had done a further inspection of those manholes and found that their structural integrity, as well as the structural integrity of the pipes connecting the manholes, were um, were satisfactory. Seen to a lot of um, a lot of pipe work that we we do, and a lot of inspections that take place. So our work has now only been contained to um, this segment of pipe here. We had done a TV inspection of that pipe and there's a lot of deficiencies in that pipe that need to be corrected and can only be corrected by um, open cut replacement of that pipe in place. So the so manholes- Just in that green uh, circle that you just wrote is where the work will be done, nowhere yep. else? Yep. Okay. Um, so, so for deep excavation of pipe replacement, we, we are proposing for the buried manholes to have the existing frame and cover, the rims, to be removed from them. And then they'll put some forcings underneath it to bring them up to grade to just meet general um, you know, maintenance requirements that are, should be done on these, these manholes regularly. If you know, they ever get a clog or something, they need to get a, a backer truck in that can easily do that without having to dig up the road every single time. Um, and that's an excavation that's most likely less than two feet deep to raise these rims um, versus replacing a manhole entirely, which 
in this case would be anywhere from five to seven feet of a larger diameter eight foot excavation, um, which certainly has larger impacts on, on the vegetation and slope in that area. So that's where this project is going to. Okay. Uh, more about the other repair methods that are going to take place, but they're non intrusive methods. Uh, there won't be any excavation required for the repair of the existing infrastructure to stay in place, um, which is pretty, pretty nice and um, cost effective for the town as well. Okay. So it definitely keeps it away from some of the areas that are, are really sloughing off the side. Mm -hmm. um, you're a little bit south of that, uh, which is great. So is there any uh, changes into the proposed erosion control? Uh, so the, the the erosion control, you can see in this plan, there's, um, there's a line here that I just selected. That is the line that was the previous limit of erosion control. Um, it was closer towards the wetlands in, in this area here due to the replacement of that pipe segment, that pipe segment between um, this manhole and this manhole was definitely the closest to the wetlands that we are now not replacing. So erosion controls are still going to be in that location. They'll just be closer to the edge of the road. We still plan okay. to put the same length of erosion controls along the, the road. Um, even though we have less amount of excavation, there will be some spoiled piles and disturbed earth in the area where we're raising manholes. So okay. it doesn't hurt to just do it the so whole road. Can you show me then where the entire length of the erosion control would be put? Yeah, so I'll draw in my, my green line here. So it'll start yeah. up at the top of the site, the, the road here, and it'll just basically at this point follow the edge of the road all okay. the down, you know, all the ways basically to where we're raising our last rim of our structure. Okay. It's this structure here. That's, that's our last point of the excavation for the project. Okay. And further into the road. So, yep. John, I'll let you comment, but I think that makes um, some more sense as we took a, a walk through there. Um, and the road control uh, details on this one, do you have yeah. them on your sheets? I did. I had the, the updated plans that I had sent with the revisions included our standard road control notes, as well as you know, we intend to do a straw model in the silt fence. Certainly understand the sensitive area, um, and we also have a detail for a veg a vegetated slope stabilization, which includes like a, a erosion control fabric. Um, if there are um, slopes that are disturbed greater than three to one or greater, this is a detail that would take place. But with the work that we have proposed now, I would highly doubt that there would be. Um, much disturb disturbance to that that bank on the on the, the side of the, okay. of the road. So you know, you you have it in the plans for uh, a, a bio barrier, but there's no, but you're not sensing that you probably need it because of the um, sloping issues. Yeah, I, I I'll yeah. go back to to our to our plan here. Um, yeah. The the excavation for this um, this pipe. And we're connecting to the existing manhole. Um, so they only need to open up, you know, it'll be a five foot width to, to excavate that pipe. And I can go to our profile for a depth of what they're going to be looking for there. Um, and the, the surface is 134.5, and the pipe invert is 128. Um, so yeah. it'll be about a six to seven foot excavation, which is yeah. very much doable in a, a four or five foot wide trench on the center line of that pipe. Um, okay. And how long do you think the uh, project will take? Being reduced down to this one pipe segment and the raising of these rims, um, they can lay the uh, contract can typically lay around six to 800 feet of pipe a day. Um, the digging out here should be very easy, being this close to the river. I can't see this project lasting more than a week, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I'm not 
generally choose the schedules for contractors on public projects. But uh, two, we can say two weeks at, at maximum. I cannot see this going more than uh, Okay. And when are you looking to schedule it? Uh, would be August of this year, I think, okay. is maybe the target timeline. Yeah, August would be great. That's a nice, hopefully, a nice, dry time of year. Um, yeah. And I would throw it out before we go, open up to commissions for discussions. Maybe we don't know what the rains do at, at any time of the year anymore, but we, we probably want a, a good dry period. Uh, uh, you know, 72 hours of it less than half an inch of rain in a 24 hour period or something before. Yeah, uh, the work is, is done so that we are truly dry over there. Um, but we can um, discuss that in a minute. Uh, anything else, Jeremy? No, this is um, this is this is the reduced scope of the project. Um, really thought, that, I really think that this is better for the resource areas out there as well. Yeah, so the work is. Can be taking place in the road or just on the outside on the opposite side of the river um, on the school side and it's um, certainly a win for the town as well with the, the scope of work and the, the condition of a lot of these manholes and pipes out there are in great shape even considering their age and um, their location proximity to the river so yeah that's good news we find a lot of our our uh, infrastructure is not in that great of shape, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, anything else, Jeremy? That's all I have to present. Okay, uh, commissioners, any questions? Uh, and Sean, especially you're out there walking around with me, taking a look, uh, but any commissioners, any thoughts on this? <clears throat> this is great news. Great news for the town, great news for that area. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think this, uh, especially with the erosion control being placed in all the way uh, with the barriers and the waddles, uh, just in case that's great, we'll do it. Uh, it's scheduled for August. Um, I don't have the specific uh, low rain period uh that's in our conditions but uh we can add that to it jeremy if that's okay when we, we send this out um and if there's any you know uh, issues with it just let us know we'll work with you but we want to make sure we're we're doing the work uh in a very dry period at this location um for your ice scope um And everything else is um, is really, you know, the exemption on the um, on the form for this kind of work, um, and we will put in the form. Well, the right exemption number, I think it's uh, ten o two two a two and uh, ten fourteen ten, uh, but we'll get that in there um, along with some of the conditions. But any other thoughts from uh, Ann, Mary, or Ben? Nope. Okay. So now you're going to do this again to me uh, and uh, accept the uh, accept the motion. So I would say we would um, accept the revised plan as discussed uh, this evening on our 5.324 meeting. Um, that there be no changes in the approach control as as discussed. Um, We look at you know voting on the reduced scope with the exemption number five, which we put in the uh, specific CMR thing, and that we'd be looking at having the work done in August, and we would provide the applicant with the uh, low rain or uh, um, uh, minimum rain requirements for the work, uh, along with um, some of the general requests of other conditions that we'd be notified 72 hours in advance, uh, be able to do a site visit before the project starts, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but we'll put all that together. Uh, when the form comes out, you see it. If there's any questions from uh, either yourself or uh, uh, Kevin, we can uh, 
uh, discuss. We have plenty of time before the project starts, but I do uh, appreciate the update on this. I think it's um, the changes make a lot of sense. Um, and uh, with that, uh, Ann, Mary, or Ben, I'm not sure if anybody caught what I just kind of went through, but hopefully Sean did, and it's uh, fairly straightforward. Sean, you're nodding. Ah. We are uh, may accepting a motion to uh, uh, approve. Is it the RDA? Yeah, the reduced scope on the RDA. With the reduced scope, yeah, and the exemption number five in place for to be done during a dry period, the seventy-two hour advance notice for the CONCOM to uh, to a site inspection prior to work. Yeah, all well, the general uh, orders and conditions. So, I think that works. I and I appreciate the. Uh, Update and the changes. That's great. All right. So I'll also move it. Somebody second it. Okay. I second it. Okay. Motion on the table to accept the uh, uh, GRDA for uh, Little Meadow Road. Um, we have a reduced scope that we discussed tonight. And so I think a quick roll call vote um, with conditions noted. Uh, Sean Levy. Levy, aye. Uh, Anne Mary. Anne Mary Cloutier, aye. Uh, ben. Ben Byrne, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. So that uh, we'll close out that hearing on the uh, Little Meadow Road, and uh, we'll get you some of the uh, more specific on the conditions that I'm not able to articulate too well tonight with my my head cold going on. But it'll be in writing, and we can discuss later. All right, that's quite all right. I appreciate all right. you all. Uh, have a good evening. All right, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Uh, all right, the next order of business on the agenda tonight is the Mill Village Road map 132, lots 2930. Subsequent to that, with the sunny day still pit inspection in WRA report. And I think I would just want to um, switch those and move to the sunny days uh updates um at this point and first uh ben i know you did a site visit maybe last week for the uh erosion control uh do you have a date when that went on and, and kind of an update for the rest of the commissioners uh yep yeah, i walked the uh property with the owner uh we inspected the whole circle there um everything looked pretty good um Along the road and stuff, actually, some of the grass and stabilization where they put the culverts in is uh, already starting to poke up through. So it's uh, it's looking good. So you're you're happy with everything they did the whole circumference, right? Yes, sir. All right. Good. Uh, I am trying to get uh, go see uh, the owner uh, here next week or maybe tomorrow. Just to take a look at, at the things that they sent in the uh, update that they provided, I think it was last week. Um, we have a letter from DDT Associates on May 16th. Um, and so their initial wetlands uh, person that they had on file with us is apparently retired, I believe. And they have brought back uh, a fellow that worked with it initially, I think his name was Fred King, um, and he worked for the DDT Associates, and he was out there and did a review, and uh, as you can see from the documents, there was uh, a number of recommendations uh, for the uh, wetlands uh, replication area that he provided. Um, I have not had a chance to go out and look at those, um, to discuss with them. We do have to review this. I'm not sure if we're set to do that tonight. Um, there are a number of specific recommendations. Um, but I will try to do a site visit at either tomorrow or next week. Um, lots of review. Um, we may want to then, it's not really a continuation. Um, it's kind of an update, but we do have to kind of take a look at the revisions and update the uh, orders, conditions, et cetera, 
for, for the location. And um, if you all feel like you're ready to do that this evening, uh, that's great. I have just have not had a chance to uh, to study this a lot. Uh, and there are some specific recommendations that we'd have to take a look at. Any thoughts? I'm happy to push it off for the next meeting so that we can do a better full review. I know you haven't been well and we've been very busy. Yeah, hard to find the time. Um, I think some of the work is progressing, so I want to get out there uh, and take a look. Like I said, Ken, a note um, earlier today that I have not heard back from him that he's going to be there tomorrow. Uh, but I do want to, you know, update the commissioner for some of the changes there um, and review. So, Amy, this is really just kind of a notification of changes. So we didn't open up a hearing or anything, but I think we can just add it to a discussion project, uh, discussion topic for our next meeting. And uh, hopefully I have a lot more details for them. Does that make sense to you as the administrator here? Yeah, I think that that makes perfect sense. We can just, um, yep, uh, I'll just keep it on the agenda under discussion for uh, for the next meeting. Okay. And they have been working really close with us and keeping up on stuff. So I think uh, we'll be able to uh, get through this pretty quick. But I don't think we'll need a special meeting back if they're you know, really pushed up against the wall and need to do something the next couple of weeks. Maybe. We'll try to do a special meeting, but otherwise, I think we can wait for the end of the month. Um, let's see. So, uh, the other item on the open, especially the Mill Village Road, uh, map 132, lots 29 and 30, uh, the adjacent right away, which is owned by the Mass DOT. Uh, this is just an update, and my computer is crazy. I mean, um, we've had some communication back and forth. Uh, between the property owners um, via uh, attorneys for both sides. Uh, and I'm trying to get a uh, a wetland delineation uh, accomplished for all three of the locations, uh, which was previously agreed to uh, by the property owners. Um, and we are kind of at a standstill, if you will, between all the attorneys. Uh, so there's no progress to date. Uh, we have a proposal in from the wetlands uh, specialist, uh, uh, Emily Stockman, to do the work, uh, but we have to get permission. Um, so no real progress, but to date, uh, our council, the town council has suggested uh, requesting an, an administrative warrant uh, through the courts to allow the delineation to occur. And there's a lot of work I have to do on that coming up. I'm hoping to meet with the uh, Administrator, town administrator, and council next week to share them next steps. Um, so there'd be more to come on that, but I definitely wanted to give you guys an update and uh, let you know what uh, how things are progressing or not progressing um, on that location. So uh, I just uh, that's just an update. And Amy, you've been involved in the conversations. Anything I missed on that? Um, the only thing I would add is that I know we've been working with the um, the permission to go on the land. Um, if you do an enforcement order, um, you don't need express permission. If you are the the concom can go on the land and and do what they need to do as long as they're performing their job. Um, and it just might be a quicker and less um, yeah. involved. Yeah, that's kind of the conversations we do in administrative warrant, which gives us seven days to do something or uh, more of an enforcement order. And I just I just need to talk to uh, the lawyers. Yep, understood. Yeah, so there's options, but we're, we're after all these years, still trying to address that location a bit further. All right, thanks, Amy. Um, any general discussion from the commissioners? I have a couple items I'll, I'll 
discuss a little bit that just came up this week. Uh, any other public comments from anybody? And I think uh, it might have been somebody, Allison from Treehouse, uh, wanted to, uh, to jump in. And I hope we didn't keep you too long. No, you're good. I've been actually filling out um, a whole bunch of butters notices for Tewksbury for an RDA. So those <laughs> things in in line with environmental things. Uh, so we have Allison basically from Treehouse. And go ahead, Allison. You have uh, some concerns with some flooding issues, I understand. Yes. Yeah, so we had a lovely freak storm on Tuesday, I believe it was this week, that yeah. passed directly over Treehouse and some parts of Deerfield, but not necessarily all parts of Deerfield. Um, and in that, um, and this is something that we dealt with last summer and with a lot of this excess rainfall that we've just been getting lately and we can't plan for dry areas um, as I heard you comment earlier. So one of the reasons I'm coming before you today is to try to prevent some of that flooding, which is now flooding into our kitchen and into our elevator. Um, and I believe it's coming from the original storm culvert on Route 5. There's like two or three of those out front. And then there's a, a secondary one by the railroad tracks behind the property. And then also along our southern fields, there's a few storm drains. And basically all of those are at max capacity, not necessarily with water, but with silts, plants that are invasive and, and other sort of debris that shouldn't necessarily be in those areas. Um, and so I guess why I wanted to just come on to public comment today is to see what what the best path forward is there to, to maybe try to get those areas cleaned up. Okay. So there's like coverts on five and ten. There's probably some on the railroad track behind you. <laughs> um, and you and you did your visual observation that they're pretty clogged. Oh yeah, I could send you guys um some some pictures from I went out there yesterday just to show you um but the along five and ten if you were to look at those sort of drain pipes the they were filled to the very top there was no water flow. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to our world. Um, mm -hmm. got a lot of um, that would be in the you know the DPW's um, sector on the maintenance of those. Um, but as it's having a direct re uh, result of flooding into the kitchen, and I know you've had some problem with the elevators in the past as well. Um, I think what I can do, Allison, is probably not a lot with this specific commission, uh, commission right now, uh, but I can reach out to DPW and to the emergency management uh, director in town and just see what we know about those covers. If they're on their maintenance schedule, uh, the town does have a, 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 a bundle of NOI for maintenance activities. Oh, okay. Uh, see if there's... Um, anything scheduled to be done on that. Now I know five and 10, that gets into the mass DOT mm -hmm. and they have their jurisdiction. So at other areas where we had problems last year off a of whopping road, on the road, we upgraded a lot of the culverts, but now we go into a much smaller culvert under mass uh, DOT and they're, we're on their plans to have something done. I just don't know when some of that would be done. So I'm not sure whether it would be within the town's jurisdiction, uh, the Mass DOT jurisdiction, or if you get onto the railroad track, that's probably actually the, uh, uh, I'd say the DPW jurisdiction, the railroad track would probably be under the Mass DOT uh, jurisdiction. Um, so we're gonna get into various different agencies. But yeah. Let me let me put it on my agenda to see what I can find out for you. If it's okay. nothing else. <laughs> you guys uh, better than me. And Mary, you had a question, comment. <clears throat> I thought that when I was on the planning board that we walked over there, and I think that there might be dry wells that maybe um, the DPW can um, pull the leaves out of the bottom. I think that that's how they were designed, but I'm yeah. not exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, so I think those are in the field if um, that's, they're sort of interspersed throughout the property and 
we do have a company that is willing to do the same thing to sort of suction out that that stuff, but they won't do anything without somebody's approval. And so I'm just trying yeah. to think whose approval that might need to be. Yeah. Is that Pioneer or I don't know? There's different vacuum guys that uh we've used and different culverts and um I don't have an answer for you tonight, honestly, oh. but I can uh reach out to John and Kevin and different folks in town and see what we can if who has what jurisdiction where and if there's something that uh, that we can get involved in because uh yeah it's an ongoing issue in a, a lot of places. Yeah. I, I can only imagine, especially with the state highway sort of running running through a lot of those areas. So Yeah, and they own a lot of the what we can and can't do. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Awesome. Well, right. I appreciate it. And uh uh probably just on the side, I'll try to get back to you in the next couple of weeks once I try to figure out a few things. That'd be great. Yeah. Find out any information too we can do for you. That sounds great. Yeah, I appreciate it. And uh, I hope you feel better. Thank you oh, all. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate sort of getting me in some direction. Yeah, yeah. See what we can do. Thanks. All right, Bye. Alfred. Thank you. Um, last couple of things that just came up over the last couple of days. I did site visits this morning, um, accompanied by uh, Mark Stinson from DGT, John Petrurek, and Blake Gilmore from the town. Uh, we looked at Depot Road, which is still closed, as well as McClellan Farm Road, which is still closed following last year's events. Uh, we looked at what could or couldn't be done with them. Uh, you know, we can, can no longer do an, an emergency certification um, for that, uh, for either one of those two sites. Uh, and there's various options that the town's going to have to consider. And, and just to let you know, there's potential for future NLIs. That would probably be the uh, the mechanism that the town would have to use that may come through the bundled uh, NLI process. We still have to unravel that a little bit. Uh, but both of those two locations we did uh, review this morning, uh, as, as well as some other topics that uh, we're, we're still working on. Um, relative to the Deerfield bundled NOI, um, we do have to take a, a look at that. We may have to amend it uh, for the town. It was in place probably two years ago. Uh, it's never really been utilized, uh, but there is a uh, an NOI process that the town has that we can do a lot of this maintenance. I don't know if you all know, but the uh, head of the DPW, Kevin Scarborough, is retiring in June. Um, so there's kind of you know, these. I'm not sure what the uh, town's going to do for replacement of, of Kevin, but it is an opportunity to look at the uh, potentially uh, amending the NOI, uh, bundled NOI, and that would uh, come before us again down the road. Also, had a note from. Um, uh, name escapes me, but the open space in uh, uh, recreation committee uh, about the town old parcels that we talked about. I don't know, last month, month before, um, and we're still trying to get uh, legal review and legal update uh, that has not proceeded. I just had an email that she had reached out to uh, town administrator to try to get some things moving here, but. Nothing more has happened on that front either. Uh, but keep you up to date on that uh, those emails. So more to come on that. Um, I think that's it. Unless anybody else has any updates or information. And Mary, you must be sitting in the most beautiful garden right there with your picture behind you. Yeah. The Smith <clears throat> Smith College bulb show from this past year. Yeah, so it's that's always wonderful down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody else? Anything? Anything new tonight? I apologize for my congestions and everything else, but this too will pass as soon as the uh, trees stop pollinating. Other than that, uh, our next uh, meeting is scheduled for June twenty seventh at 6 p.m. 
And thank you for getting through a lot of this stuff tonight. Uh, well, it's fairly straightforward, but there's some, some quirks to it, so I appreciate it. And on that, uh, unless there's other comments, we can take the motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. I'll second. All right. Motion on the table to adjourn. Thank you for taking roll call. Sean? Libby, aye. Uh, and Mary? And Mary Clutie, aye. Uh, ben? Ben Byrne, aye. Uh, Pete Law? Aye. So the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, Amy. I think we're done except oh. for all the stuff I owe you over the next week or two. Okay. Where's my recording so I can stop recording? It seems to have disappeared. Hold on. Here we go.